anyone can rewire their anxious brain. Hello and welcome to another edition of Shine 365, where our job is to help you lead a better life. Today we'll be looking at an article by Health Magazine. It's entitled Rewire Your Anxious Brain by Ginny Graves. Our minds are capable of magnificent feats of cognition, sending rocket ships into space, inventing drugs to kill deadly pathogens, remembering to buy everything at the grocery store without a list. There's a lot to worry about. But what's real? What should we really be worrying about? And what should we not worry about so much? The limbic system can be triggered by things like public speaking, or crowded elevators, or scowls from the neighbor. A scowl from your neighbor can trigger your fight or flight. That's crazy. Happily, our human brains are more sophisticated than early mammals' brains. We have a cerebral cortex, a complex processing area that can do long division, remember to buy toilet paper, and talk our limbic system off of the ledge. Remember what's real and what's not when it comes to what's worrying you. Neuroscience has shown that brain networks that fire together wire together. So chronic worry trains your brain to be more anxious. You're literally training yourself to worry more by worrying. My therapist taught me to plunge my face in cold water when I feel a panic attack coming on. The shock of the cold water, it stops the panic attack in its tracks and it helps me calm down. Becoming familiar with your anxiety is the first step in taking conscious control of it, says Sarah Gray, an instructor of psychology at the Harvard Medical School. You have to be aware of your thoughts before you can change them. And to do that, you need to approach your worry like a scientist. When you have an anxious or worried thought, write them down, along with when they cropped up, what triggered them, and what other conditions were present. Were you hungry? Tired? Was it Sunday night and you were stressed about the coming work week, suggests Gray? If you gather this data, you will see patterns and you'll become aware of your anxiety triggers to help you understand why you're anxious and then you can respond in a more effective way. Maybe you just need a nap. A mentor of mine used to tell me, don't make any major decisions when you're angry or upset, when you're hungry or when you're tired, because all three of these things can activate your fight or flight and you're not making a rational decision. People need to switch on their inner calm. So when anxiety and intense stress hit, take six short breaths, counting to four on each inhale and six to each exhale. I do a little different method. I breathe in for three seconds. I breathe out for three seconds and I'm conscious of my breath. So I'm breathing in and I'm slowing things down. I'm reducing the anxiety. I'm clearing my head. I'm not thinking of anything other than concentrating on my breath. We need to get grounded. Callahan's ice water strategy, sticking your head in a sink of cold water, will actually ground you. It interrupts your fight or flight responsibility by triggering the calming parasympathetic branch of your nervous system. When I can't immerse my face in cold water, I'll just put cold water on the back of my neck. You need to shock yourself out of the anxiety. When you're anxious, your mind is catastrophizing about all these terrible things that are going to happen to you. And you need to bring yourself out of that. So you can do that by dunking your head in a cold bath of water, dunking your head, filling the sink, or even just putting ice on your head, something to take you out of your headspace and reset yourself. Lots of people with anxiety struggle with black or white thinking. I always get nervous and embarrass myself when I give presentations, which makes the anxiety worse. But that doesn't reflect reality. Words like always and never don't usually happen. It's not, it's not all this or all that. You can give a speech 
and you can make mistakes. It doesn't mean your speech was a failure. It just means that you made some mistakes. It's not the end of the world. It's a gray area and things often aren't as bad as you think they are. And lastly, remember that the feeling will pass. This anxiety, this worry will pass. It often feels like the stress is never going to end, but the truth is even in extreme situations, anxiety always passes. Think about the last time your anxiety was through the roof. Did it feel awful? Probably, yeah. Did you worry about it? Yeah. Did you get through it? You did. You did. In fact, anxiety is driven in a large part by uncertainty. And one thing you can be certain of if you're anxious is that this sensation will pass. It will get better. The worry will dissipate. It'll go away. And things will be good again. Just remember that. I hope we've brought up some good points for you to think about. If you have any comments, please comment in the comment section. Please give us a thumbs up to help the algorithm. And we'll see you next time on Shine 365.